Hello everyone, Vito's A32 back in with some what's on deck. And there's a lot going on. I'm not going to go over everything again. I've already looked at all the new releases from Black Friday on Friday. Giving you guys a heads up on what was going on, what was new and out. Uh, the main story of Black Friday is recolors. Everyone seems to be doing recolors. It's a little bit ridiculous. I mean, House of Point Guards just before Black Friday released a new gold NLC deck, the Fort Knock, as they call it, which has apparently sold out. I say apparently because apparently uh, their Nox of Steel and their Super Nox and a bunch of their other Nox also had sold out, but they mysteriously became available on Black Friday again, or just before Black Friday. And they were all on sale, which is really annoying. I mean, they charged, they were charging 20 bucks for the Nox of Steel before, and then they were charging half as much for Black Friday. Do you really think that sits well with people like me who paid 20 bucks for it originally and now it's on sale? I don't think so. Uh, Dave Blaine released Gold Foil Split Spades, that's just a recolor, obviously, and also another color of the Skull and Bones Superior brand decks, black and silver, which or black and white, which is almost more of a reprint of something that Conjuring Arts put out before. Um, what else was there? Conjuring Arts kind of reprinted these superior brand decks in red, blue, and black, which is not even a recolor <laughs> or a slight recolor, if anything. Fairy Eleven released new. Uh, a couple of new recolors, the Black Hudsons and the Green Tycoons. And I'm a big fan of the Tycoons, and I'm looking forward to the green one. And I mean, the Black Hudsons look fine too, but again, recolors. <laughs> and what else was there? Other Play did release a recolor as well, the Black DK and Z Wheels deck. But they also released a four deck set uh, called the Harmony Collection, which I'm not a fan of because it seems, the cards seem incomplete. They have no pips on the faces of the number cards. I, it just doesn't sit well with me. Not a fan. And also the Golden Sunrise, which I do like. Orbit Brown released a new Orbit deck. Again, essentially just a recolor. Slightly different, uh, and, you know, the back design's been altered slightly, but it's essentially just a recolor. And, Bomb Magic, uh, we'll look at that in a minute. They have a new Kickstarter project for some new Hidden King decks. Again, recolor, <laughs> uh, as you'll see in a moment, in a few moments. And what else was there? Oh, yes, oh, USB-C, Bicycle Cards. They released the Bicycle Stargazer Sunset, which is essentially a recolor of the previous Stargazer deck, if you will. And very similar to uh, so many collectible point cards that decks in the past. Same artist, so not a big surprise. So uh, uh, basically, just a lot of recolors all over the place. A lot of sales. Uh, and then there was Illusionist. They released four decks. Uh, they, they, they released a bunch of decks in a brick, which I'm not a fan of. I'll get to that in a minute. Four of them are the King Slayers, which is a very minimalist variation of the King's decks. It's kind of, a lot of people have complained that it seems like they're ripping off the Fontaines because it's just a, a colored back design with a sword on it. Mirror image. Just like the Fontaines, it's a sword instead of an F. They basically said to, uh, to the Fontaines, you know, get the F out. <laughs> We're putting a sword on those. <laughs> um, and they come in four different colors. There's like two different blues and then there's red and a black, I think. I would not be surprised if there's about eight more colors of those eventually. No way an illusionist. They've also, speaking of recolors, released two new colors of the Knights decks. Green and blue, despite saying before that the reds were the last nights ever. This is why I never buy a damn thing illusionist says, because they lie left, right, and center everywhere you look. Lie, lie, lie. Do I believe that the one Kingslayer deck is only going to be available at this point in time? No. Do I believe the one, I think it's the Green Knights deck, is only going to be available at this point in time? 
No. Look on the secret menu in a couple of weeks or a couple of months. I'm saying they'll be there. <laughs> or they will make them available as a gift at some point in time. I really don't know. But I just don't buy any of that. On top of that, they also have a new Jurassic Park deck. All of these decks are available with the brick. The Jurassic Park deck is also available individually. The only one, which I'm not a fan of. And also, speaking of which, the cohorts in red also available individually via a special link in the email I just got today. I'm not sure if it was in a previous email, but today I got an email that had that link for the cohort. So if you're looking for that, now here's why I'm not a fan of this, and I've you know said this before in the past a few years ago. In the past, illusionist and conjuring arts, at the very least, um, would you know, sell a deck, whether it was a, a Zen deck from Conjuring Arts or some Madison deck or whatever from Illusionist. And it's like, can you buy a brick? You get this so-called limited one for free. But I don't want a brick. <laughs> and in order to get the one deck, I'm being forced to buy it. Like, I'm not a fan of that stuff, and I haven't done that in a while, but this is very similar. The four Kingslayer decks and the two Knights decks are only available in this brick. If I want to get them, I have to pay 99 bucks for a brick. Now, granted, there is free shipping at the moment, so that's good. But the other decks that come in the brick, the Cohorts, uh, the little deck of Horrors, which I'm assuming is not selling very well. And there's a few others. Uh, there's the Super Bs and there's some others. I already got them, and I don't need more of them. I don't want more of them necessarily, except for maybe the cohorts. And I'm being forced, you know, if I want to get those other decks, I'm being forced to pay for a brick, to pay for decks I don't want in order to get the decks that I do want. I greatly dislike that. I don't appreciate that. For the love of God or whoever you pray to, Illusionist, <laughs> whoever you find holy, I don't know who you do, um, just let people buy what they want. Stop forcing people to buy bricks of stuff they don't want to get what they do want. I really don't care much for the Kingslayer decks. I wouldn't mind the Knights decks. Uh, the Jurassic Park deck, obviously I can get individually. I just don't like this notion where they force people to pay for stuff they don't want just to get what they do want. I am sick and tired of it. Anyways, enough of the writing. Let's get on. To Kickstarter. First of all, there's some new decks. The Military Pinup Playing Cards by Agitcom. 35% funded, 28 days to go. Uh, I'm still waiting for the previous decks that I paid for from Agitcom. They should be on the way. Canada Post is still a mess. They're still currently striking, doing rotating strikes. I'm obviously still getting mail. There are times. It, the strike has affected delivery here twice, I think. Two days. Uh, during two different weeks. But not much of an effect. Obviously, it's causing a huge amount of delays. There's thousands, I think hundreds of thousands of packages that backlogged sitting somewhere. So, I, obviously, it's very slow process. Now, the Canadian government is going to legislate them back to work, which they're not happy about. They're upset because they say it travels on their right to fair negotiating with you know unions and contracts and whatnot but you know what maybe don't go on strike during the business time of the year don't go on strike at Christmas time when people are trying to deliver packages and parcels or buy stuff online for Christmas you know maybe Wait until after Christmas, or you should have done it way before Christmas. Apparently, they've been negotiating for like a year, and they decide, let's go on strike now. And then they're upset that they're being forced back to work. And it's not the first time even that's happened, so it's not a big surprise, but they could have done things differently. Anyways, so this is the military pinup deck. It's not. Who are excited? Thirteen dollars U.S. That's seventeen dollars Canadian for a deck. You. Um, it's not bad artwork. 
Going to be put to buy Noir Arts, which is a turnoff right away. Fairly exclusive to Kickstarter until it shows up on the Noir Arts website, I'm sure. Or elsewhere. Um, you know, it's a pretty nice tough case. The artwork isn't bad. I'm assuming these are real chicks that he's kind of digitized, or whatever you want to call it. Digital, digitalized. Can't speak. Uh, the faces are fine. The artwork on the court guards is pretty nice. But that being said, decks like this with scantily clad or sexy or half naked women on Kickstarter are about a dime a dozen. So it's not exactly overly unique. There's been other military pinup style decks or pinup style decks in general. So again, not that unique. I do like the texture they put on the pips, the number cards, that's pretty nice. The back design, however, is what really turns me off. What the hell is this? Okay, I get a camouflage for the back design that makes perfect sense, and that would have been great. But why is it... I get 8-bit back design. That just is horrible. It makes no sense. It does not fit with the whole theme, necessarily. It just, it looks dumb. Just leave it as a camouflage back. It would have looked a lot better. Why is it 8 bit? This has nothing to do with video games. It just it looks silly. Uh, I mean, overall, not bad. The artwork on the inside of the tough case, again, also, why? You're never going to be able to see it unless you rip open the tough case. You're never going to be able to see it or appreciate it fully. Uh, they sort of just don't like a, uh, a camouflage pattern on the inside, you know. Anyway, um, $9,500, they're going to varnish it. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, at $13,000, is going to be a second deck with a marking system because this is the type of deck people are going to use to perform magic with them, sir. <laughs> Moving on, we got the Hidden King Luxury Edition from Bomb Magic. It is 60% funded, 25 days to go. I am much more confident in this one funding than I am the pinup deck. Uh, that being said, it's not overly exciting. They've previously done a couple of these Hidden Keen decks through their website like a year ago or whatever it was. You can see the reviews on my channel. One of them was this one, the yellow one, and the other one I think was black. Well, now they've redesigned it, as they call it, making classic red and blue versions, as you can see. Wow, so exciting. In fact, it would have been better if they just left just a standard border. Uh, instead, they've, they've recolored, eliminated the black border, added a white border. And just changed the color in general. It's, it's fine. And it's in red and blue, classic ones. They are about $9 Canadian, so, you know, figure that out to U.S. There's also a rainbow edition, which each card back has a different color. I mean, if it was a, a rider back, I, I, li I would like it. I do have rider backs like that, or some other classic back. This back design, I mean, it's okay. It's not my favorite back design. Um, and then, of course, there is this copper one, copper foil edition, which is pretty nice. You'll see it in this little video here. Pretty sighty. Pretty cool. I'll give them that much. And they're going to be printed by Taiwan Playing Cards and Luxury Paper Stock with Legendary Finish. Oh, good. Standard Faces. Um, you know, I mean, they're okay. Uh, I don't know how I feel about it necessarily. Seven bucks US, that is your price, for the red and the blue, 13 bucks for the rainbow. And uh, 15 bucks for the foil one, which is not bad. All for 42 bucks US. Uh, let me just see something. Uh, which is not even a discount. That's the exact price of getting all four individually. You'd think it'd be a little discount, but. Uh, it is what it 
is. Apparently, there's also mm. there's some free shipping to the U.S. and Taiwan, but not anyone else. Go figure. Apparently, buying bricks, you can't add them on for some reason. Or uncut seats. <laughs> Also, you can get the uh, original ones in the yellow and the white, actually. It was white, and I think brown, and then yellow and black. Anyway, moving on. Uh, you know, it's an okay deck. Next up, there's not a whole lot of great decks this week, but there's some that are okay. Speaking of not that okay, next we got the ring playing cards. By Galaxy Design, which is supposed to be an affordable crust USB-C deck. 36% fun at 14 days to go. Apparently, in this case, affordable means a lack of artwork or design or effort. <laughs> I mean, no offense to the creators. Um, but, I'm just not a fan of it. It's four pounds, which is about five dollars US, seven dollars Canadian for one deck, which is a very reasonable price. And they say the value is going to be, retail value is going to be ten pounds or twelve dollars US. Which isn't even cool, in my opinion. I mean, you. I mean, it's fine to sell something on Kickstarter for a very reasonable price, but and then to say that this is going to be worth that much more in the retail afterwards, yeah, I don't like it. I don't buy it. I'm not going to buy it. Um, the faces are completely standard. They've recolored the court cards into grays and blacks and reds, but that's a fairly standard color. Ace of Spades just has that ring on it. Same with the Jokers. Very plain and simple. And then the back design as well. It's a very one-way back design. Very simple deck. It's going to have a B or premium stock as it's now known. And it says it's a crust premium stock. Traditionally cut. Linen finish. Um, right. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, it's just not exciting. It's not a nice color. It's not a nice back design. I'm just not a fan. I don't care if it's cheap. It's just not great. And I don't know if it's going to fund. It may. It may not. We'll have to keep an eye on that in the next couple of weeks. Let me just close up some of these if I can. Or maybe not. <laughs> uh, moving on. We got the Dental playing cards by Bookable. It is funded 26 days to go. Dental is apparently French for lace. Okay. <laughs> it's an interesting tuck case. At least it's more of a traditional tuck case. I've not been a fan of their special tuck cases they've released recently. Uh, but let's look at this. Uh, the box is nice and it's kind of lacy. I, I mean, I don't know if this is this painted on, if it's like cut out. And you see like something on the inside if it's a sleeve. It inherits the craftsmanship of European lace craftsmen. Yes, because I'm sure there was a lot of men crafting lace back in the day. <laughs> Probably more women than men, but you know. Um Okay, it is covered with a shell of hollow craft lace. I don't know if that's gonna be paper cut out. If it's actual lace or what it is, that's fine. It's oh yeah, you see it right there. It's interesting. I'm assuming that's just paper. And then the back design looks like that. It's very colorful. It's a one-way back. It does not really have a whole lot of a lace element to it, in my opinion. It's more like a connect the ducks, uh, connect the dots look to it. <laughs> Um, the faces are fairly standard, some recoloring, standard recolored court cards, very generic, in my opinion. And I guess for some reason they removed the suit indicator pips, because apparently that's the cool thing to do. Uh, the Joker is very colorful. It's a very standard bookable type deck. It's I like that they saw us, you know, I'm putting together the tough base, that's kind of cool. And then cutting out that. It 
it's interesting. I just, you know, I'll get it later, if anything. Moving on. The one deck I do like this week. The Lotaria playing cards by D. Nigma. It is 25% funded with 25 days to go. Uh, this is based on... Oh, it says it's the richest, one of the richest cats in color tones of detail designs and point guards. And it's inspired by a Mexican game called Loteria, which I've heard of before. It's a pretty big gold look, and looks at $14,000 US. It's a nice uh, bat design. It does say Loteria point cards across the top and bottom, which is a little bit unnecessary, but it's part of the detail, the design detail. It is marked. You might be able to guess that the marking system relates to these four pips in this red bar. It's a really thin border. Since it's going to be USB-C produced, it's no way, there's no way in how it's going to be that thin once, it, once it's done. I do like the colors, the, the different blues on the back design, and the little red highlights. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, there's a pattern on the inside of the top case as well, which is nice. There's legend stories behind each suit, which I think is cool. Nice custom court cards and artwork. Big aces, apparently. Uh, part of the marking system, well, as well, you'll see, is related to something else. Those are nice pips on the aces and elsewhere. Nice court cards. The other part of the marking system is related to this little floral element in the corner. I think that's fine. <clears throat> There's some more information on it. I, I think it's pretty nice. I'm a backer. They have previously designed, another reason why I'm a backer is they previously designed another deck, the Imperial, which I was not able to, I did not pledge for, and have not been able to find it anywhere. I think it was available at Plain Thor decks at one point in time, but I missed out on it. Haven't really seen it anywhere else, so why not? I decided to bat this one with iron on. Pretty nice artwork. I do like the pips and the aces and the bat design as well. Let's see here, someone says, oh yeah, it was fourteen dollars with the add-ons fifteen. I missed out on the early bird. It's the Royal Edition as it's called. Anyways, moving on next, we got the Genesis Point Cards by Genesis Point Cards. It's 4% funded, 40 days to go. It has no chance in hell of funding. And I'll explain why in just a minute. Just mathematically speaking, it's an impossibility, I would say. Um, the back design, I think we've seen, I think I've seen this before, either I've seen it on Instagram or this is a relaunch under a new account, but I know I've seen this before. It's not very exciting. It's just a bunch of triangles. whoop de doo <laughs> The court cards are standard. They've been recolored. And that's all you see. Wow. Here's my problem, though. This is why... And also, here's another thing. It says here, Risk and Sound, that sometimes during the holiday seasons, the printing process can be delayed by a couple of weeks. The delivery is slated for July of 2019. Who cares if there's a bit of a delay during the holidays? You're not even going to print during the holidays at this rate. <laughs> but here's the problem why it's not going to fund. Look at the rewards. You can buy one deck for 13 bucks, two for 23 bucks, or three for 31 bucks. He would need like a thousand backers for each one of these in order to fund. There's no way he's going to fund without getting thousands of backers with a goal that high and only offering a max of three decks per person that you can pledge for. Just do the math. It's just, it's not going to work. <laughs> it's an impossibility. Unless he gets a huge amount of backers, which never happens with point card projects, on Kickstarter, unless you're someone like 52 cards with the mint point cards, or, uh, you know, someone like Name of the Wind. Not even Jackson Robinson gets thousands of backers. I mean, I don't know who, why this person thinks they're going to fund. It's just not going to happen. Hmm. Moving on, we got the Nomad Subversion. 
by Hazar Ali, another one that I don't think is going to find. It's 4% from the 25 days to go. Every king in this deck is apparently a female, which is fine. It's, it's nothing wrong with that. It's an interesting idea. The artwork isn't bad. $12,800 uh, Singaporean dollars for the goal. It's about the same in Canadian, so... Or is that 10,000 US? Approximately, I would say. Oh my god, I didn't even see that before. 21 bucks, $21 Singaporean or $20 Canadian for a deck of cards. In a smooth matte alignment and embossed. Okay, so it's smooth and it's embossed. Oh, good. <laughs> Uh, oh my word. Uh, it's 35 bucks for two decks, which is still pricey, but it's better than just buying one deck at that price. An uncut sheet and a deck for 98 bucks. Brick, 185 bucks. Good grief. Ultimate deck, $888 for, what is this? Oh. Art prints. And three decks and an uncut seat. For a thousand bucks, you can name a card after yourself. Okay. <laughs> Most people are not going to do that. The artwork is interesting. I'm not a fan of the aces having images on them. And especially that type of an image. The rest of the cards aren't bad. Obviously, the queens and the kings are female. The jacks are male. But not bad. I think it's interesting how they're holding. I have some kind of a pip incorporated into the artwork. A lot of the art just looks like sketches. The Joker is for some reason looks like this. It looks absolutely horrible. It's black with a neon -y blue color from what it looks like. And then this is the tuck case. Where's the back design? That's one I know that's the one the one problem I had is there is no back design shown on this project. Delivery date is at a conservative six months upon completion of the project. Right. <laughs> there is, um, at these prices, the lack of a back design, I don't think it's going to fund. <laughs> uh, moving on. I just don't see it happening. We got the uh, Crazier Cardistry Trainers and Martellus playing cards by Area 52 by Provar Zane. It is funded nine days to go. Pretty short campaign. This one is mostly some trainers, but the, he's also selling his stack the Martellus playing cards, which he's already sold before. This is just him selling the last 300 decks or whatever. The back design is very simple. It's just a bunch of M's from Martellus. How creative. And the faces are completely standard. Again, looks like they're missing pips for some dumb reason. I've just never been a fan of that. Why remove something? I, I, don't, I don't understand why creators feel the need to remove something that is there. Wow. <laughs> how creative. <laughs> These are the trainers. They are ever so exciting. Actually, these trainers look like they were ripped off a deck from Gemini decks. The uh, big boy decks. That's exactly like what they look like. They were ripped off the big boy decks. And, I mean, I'm not a fan. Apparently, they're producing 100 sets of these trainers for a thousand bucks. We're going to make close to zero profit. Alright. Not a fan of the trainers or those cards. Speaking of not a fan, the next G-Dex. Fractured Point Guard by Sexton Card, which is 60% funded, 24 days to go. 
Not a very original idea with uh, the spat design. Oops, it's the wrong one. Where is the other? There it is. There it is. The back design, it's not a very original idea with that diagonal stripe. Other decks have done it before. I think personally you shouldn't take other people's ideas and incorporate them into your own. Be more original. And in the back design, it's okay. Then the tuck case looks exactly the same, which to me is a bit of overkill. It's not a very good design and he put it all over the tuck case. There's no name or logo or anything on the tuck case that identifies what it is, which I'm never a huge fan of. And the court cards, horrible. They are repeating court cards. They all have the same color scheme. The pips have been customized, at least on the aces. They're not that exciting. I, okay, they never cards this well. They're, they're not that exciting though, but they got the color scheme within them. Yeah, I'm not a fan. I don't like repeating court cards, especially like this. It just all the same. Wow, gamblers! Why is Gamblers Warehouse uh, uh, agreeing to fulfill so many crappy projects? <laughs> I guess they'll they'll take any money they can get. Um, lastly, there's one new project, one more new project, that is the Fracture Playing Cards. How original, it's very similar in name to the other Fracture deck. This one is by Reborn Magicians, it's 24% funded, 52 days to go, good lord. Um, again, I've said this before, I'll say it again. When you launch a project on Kickstarter, you should launch something that you are confident in, that you feel can fund immediately not okay i think this is going to take two months to fund yeah. <coughs> excuse me if you think your project is going to take two months in order to fund then don't even bother launching it because most of these projects that require you know 50 days 60 days 45 days whatever to fund are absolutely horrible <laughs> let's look at this one by the reborn magicians in france the back design is okay, it's like it's cracked, like it's been shot in the middle and there's a crack. It's a nice red color, a blood red color, ironically. But it still feels like there's a lot of blank space. Fourteen euros for one deck. A little bit pricey. And then we get to the court cards, uh, number cards and everything. Custom pips that are fractured, if you will. And then the court cards, I'm not really feeling. Because it looks like they took a standard USB-C court card and they traced it out. Voila! As they might say, there's your back design. Oh, we. Oui. Um, no. It, it, like I said, it, you look at this King of Clubs, for instance, it looks like they just took the USB-C court card and traced it out. Well, at that point, you might as well have just used standard court cards. It would have been better. It does have a side opening tuck case. So compared to Knox or the Exquisites. The next with point cards. These are going to be printed by Card of Moonday. Which they say will have the uh, same finish in than the Brigalia or the Butterfly. English. Not their first language. And there's also a stretch pool for a blue edition because it's such an exciting deck. Will the court cards be blue? I don't know. We'll have to find out. Stay tuned next time. We'll find out, maybe. Who knows? Probably not. Because I don't think it's even going to find, never mind the stretch goal. Oh, so much excitement. By the way, I'm kind of curious who the reborn magicians are. It is... Oh, they actually have a website. Interesting. Yad or a thought. Six magicians. They're not going to bother to tell us who these six magicians supposedly are, apparently. But there's six magicians that are reborn. Oh, never mind. All the actors of the project. They're acting wrong. Zan Samuel Arazer is the designer. Hugo Wizzler does the Finnissons, the Completions. Jan Rafault, the Finances. Louis Piquet, Trailers. 
After a bland communication, Sophie Tavania tra translations, apparently not very well, <laughs> and Alexis Arsenault. The deck name, wow. Somebody decided, they, they actually had someone who created this deck name, who thought of this deck name, and they're getting credited for it. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, anyways. Let me just close up some of these pages very quickly, hopefully. And then we'll look at what else is on Kickstarter. So yeah, as you can see this week on Kickstarter, uh, quite a bit of new stuff. Most of it is just not exciting in the least. Except for the Lateria. The Lateria deck is actually nicely done. Completely custom. Unique. Original concept and idea. For the rest, not really unique or original or that exciting. Moving on. We got the Paisley Point Guards. Special Editions Ruby Red and French Blue by Diamond Point Guard. Which is funded 15 days to go. In my opinion, it looks a damn lot like the... Like the... um. The Dapper Decks from Vanishing Inc. In fact, does that not look very similar? Very similar. It's not, you know, an exact copy. It's very similar. It's the same, you know, concept and theme and idea. They should have been more original. I mean, to me, it's like they're copying someone else's idea. Anyway, put that aside. <laughs> Next, you got the Oriental Playing Cards Black Edition by Riffle Shuffle. It is funded, 19 days to go. In my opinion, I don't know why they're calling it the Black Edition. I know it's a black tuck case and everything, but the cards are actually red. And the original deck was actually black. It just is a little bit confusing. Why not just make it the Red Edition? Moving on. There is one that I'm interested in, we'll get later on. Family Point Guard by Nathan Collins. 5% funded, 11 days to go. Not a chance in hell. Not when you're selling a custom photographic deck for 52 bucks, I think it was. Or a completely random one with pictures of random people for 25 bucks. Nobody's going to pay that. Google custom decks. You'll find a variety of sites that you could do something like this with your own family pictures for a fraction of that cost. Moving on. A minimalist tarot deck. <laughs> uh, who knows if that's going to fund. Not digging that one at all. Golden Spike 150th Anniversary by Jody Eklund is funded 8 days to go. Oh How You, Matsuri Playing Cards by Karta Mundi. My Revelation Workshop is 75% funded 14 days to go. I do like that one. Hopefully it funds, we'll see. Vegas Defractor Playing Cards by Philippe Guiz funded 10 days to go. It really helps when you have a massive, uh, when the, the, the decks are pretty pricey. Not a fan. Particular. I mean, I like the idea. I'd like to get them, but I've already been screwed by them last time, so I'm not going to go for it this time. World Card Series. Well, Worldcardseries.com is funded 12 days to go. The only reason it's funded is because there's people buying seven decks. It's a big series. There's seven decks, one for each continent, but they're just not well put together. They could do so much better if it was a much better design overall. Secret Eats of Point Guards by Card Deck is well funded apparently. Ten days to go. It helps when it, the decks are probably pretty expensive. Because they're not that exciting. Uh, Agenda Point Guards Redux by Flagrant Agenda. Funded, well funded six days to go. They ran into some issues. Oh boy, <laughs> because they're, they're selling these decks as limited editions, 500 each of the bicycle branded and the limited edition, if I recall correctly. But then, some point in the last week, they decided uh, a lot of people are looking for these decks, so we're going to change it to a thousand decks each. Uh, there's a lot of people that were not happy about that. 500 decks is 500 decks, and I can understand their, uh, them not being happy about that. So they've changed it back to 500 decks of each. 
And that is smoked up point guard by Tristan. 9% fund is 14 is 12. Not a chance of how that's going to be fun. Barn a miracle. Try the Peacocks by Arcadia point guards. It's funded three days to go. Good stuff. Happy to see that. Sunday, Voodoo point guards by Chris Mann is also funded three days to go. It's fine. It's an interesting deck of cards. Enuma point guards by Nemesis Factory cards is also funded 53 hours to go. Medusa point cards with way too many market systems by Antonio Cassisi is 88% funded 9 days to go. I imagine it's just a matter of time. And then the Ruby point card relaunched by Jatrix. Not a chance in hell. It's 20% funded 6 days to go. It's a relaunch. Pretty much he just reduced the goal by a little bit despite the fact that he, you know, got like this much funding last time. He somehow thinks relaunching with a few thousand dollars less is going to make a huge difference. It. So that is that for this week. I didn't believe. Comment, rate, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Check out the Black Friday Bonanza video from the other day for all the Black Friday releases. And look at that. And all the sales. The sales going on everywhere. There will be more sales tomorrow on Silk because it's Cyber Monday. And that is that. We'll see you next time for more. Thanks for